Hello, in this video I'd like to think a little bit about um, the reciprocal function y equals, whoops, shall I put it in white, y equals um, k over x, where k is some constant. Um, and I would like to think about this function um, uh, primarily in relation to its graph. Now, there's one thing that I often remember um, when it comes to a function of this general form. And we can write this um, for, for contextual purposes as, for example, y equals 1 over x, which is often used as a, as a, as a, as a general example of how this uh, function behaves graphically. But we can, or, or it could be 2 over x, or 3 over x, um, and, and so on and so forth. So when considering it in the form y equals 1 over x, there's one thing that I, that I often remember, and, and, and really it, it's quite an interesting point, and this is a very uh, peculiar function, and a very peculiar graph, and I say that because um, of, well, for two reasons. Firstly, that this, the curve of this function does not cross the axes, uh, and um, more particularly, the curve tends toward uh, the y-axis when y is really large and positive or when y is really large and negative um, but the y-axis actually is a vertical asymptote and so what what ends up happening is we get this very peculiar type of of shape of the graph and so for example I just sketch it very generally um, uh, the, the function the graph of the function y equals 1 over x is going to look something like this it's going to look something like this, where uh, along the x-axis, th this this graph it, it's going to tend toward the x-axis. The the curve tends toward the x x-axis when x is, in other words, uh, uh, very large and positive or very large and negative, and so it looks like this. Where again, the y-axis, whoops, the y-axis acts as an asymptote. And I'll just denote that in red. So just a dotted line never crosses the y-axis. And one of the reasons for this actually is an interesting one, and that has to do when x equals 0. Right, when x equals 0, we would think uh, sort of, of what happens around the origin right there, and maybe I'll denote that in another color, right, around the origin right there. But, well, in mathematics right now, as it stands, when x is 0, when we have a 0 in the denominator, so, you know, 1 over 0, or 0, or 2 over 0, or whatever, 150 over 0, it doesn't matter. Um, so mathematics sort of breaks down at this point. The mathematicians aren't really sure of how to approach this and what this means. And actually, graphically, we, um, we see it uh, uh, very clearly here in the function y equals k over x, or again, there's an asymptote at, um, uh, uh, along the, the y-axis, and you can see that we end up with this very peculiar-looking graph. Uh, and so to 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 uh, expand on the example where y equals one over x, um, let's just go through a few of the steps. I I suppose just to think about it a bit more deeply. So we we know we have the function here y equals one over x, um, and uh, essentially when for this function, I'll write it down here when um, when x equals equals zero, as we've seen, uh, y is, is is essentially not defined. You can treat it as not defined, not defined. And um, uh, likewise, uh, when y equals zero, y equals zero, uh, we can say that x is is not defined. And that's probably the most concise statement, is that it's not defined. Um, and also, what's uh, um, interesting about this, the graph of, of this function, we think very generally, uh, is how when x tends toward um, positive infinity, uh, y actually tends toward 0. Whoops y tends toward 0. And uh, additionally, when x 
tends toward negative infinity. Um, y actually tends to, well, it continues to tend toward zero. Uh, and again, we can carry on uh, where when y tends toward positive infinity, x tends toward zero, and when y tends toward negative infinity, x still tends toward zero. Um, and so in graphing this once more, let's just uh, do so by thinking about uh, this function according to just a very basic table of values. Um, and I'll just set that up right here, where if we say x at the top or x values along the top, then we've got y equals 1 over x. And uh, you can just do a few values, just so we don't have to be so comprehensive here to really get a sense of what's going on. Um, so just do a couple, whoops, just do a couple values, a few values, so say when it's x is minus 1, and we, we want to really just, I guess, suppose, zoom in, in and around the origin. Uh, so um, we'll go uh, negative 1, negative 1 half, negative 1 fourth, uh, and then and we'll have the origin here, so we'll go uh, instead, we'll go to the other side of the origin, we'll go 1 fourth, 1 half, and we'll say 1. Well, uh, when x is negative 1, we're just going to substitute values for x into this equation, right? So when x is negative 1, well, we're just going to end up with 1 over negative 1, which is just negative 1. Uh, uh, now when x is negative 1 half, we substitute that into this function, we're going to get negative 2. Uh, and likewise, when x is uh, negative 1 fourth, we're going to substitute that into our function, and we are going to get negative 4. And the pattern is quite obvious, where if we have 1 fourth, substitute in, we're going to get 4. Substitute 1 half, we're going to get 2. Substitute 1, we're going to get 1. And so, if we were to sketch this graph once again, this time labeling some points, uh, I'm not sure if that will give me enough space, but we'll see. We'll just say here, 1, 2, 3, 4. Um, and of course, this is the y-axis. Uh, and we'll just make this 1, 2, 3, 4. And we'll go along here. We'll say 1 fourth, 1 half. Uh, we'll just say, yeah, it's not going to be completely to scale, but it's all right. So 1 fourth call this one half, we'll call this one, and likewise on this side, negative one fourth, negative one half, and negative one. It's not the neatest graph, but it will do for the purposes of this video. Um, and so, yeah, basically now we can just sketch, plot our points. Uh, for example, when x is one fourth, we know it's uh, y equals four, when x is one half, we know that y is 2, and then when x is 1, we know y is 1, it's going to be like that. And then now for on this side, oh, and I should label this, that's negative 1, that's negative 2, that's negative 3, that's negative 4, of course that's the x-axis as well. Uh, and so yeah, if I, um, actually, why don't I highlight this in another color just so it stands out. It's not the greatest graph, um, so it's a bit uh, condensed. Okay, so uh, again, when x is negative one fourth, we know that y is four. So put a dot there. When x is negative one half, y is negative two there. And then when x is negative one, y is negative one. So it's going to be there. And as we saw at the outset of the video, we end up with a graph just like this, where it tends towards zero as x gets increasingly large and positive. Y also tends towards zero. In same thing here. Looks just like that. It's a very peculiar graph, and I think it's one of my favorites actually. I, I quite like this function just to think about it uh, more deeply mathematically. Um, but um, the one thing that, that I always remember firstly is the point that, you know, um, when x is zero here, things so really start to break down, and that just reminds me that, okay, I'm going to have a graph that looks something like this. And secondly, um, the other point that's, uh, that one should remember here that will help uh, in the future sketch uh, graphs of the function y equals k over x is that the curves with the, with the, 
with uh, equations y equals k over, k over x falls into two categories two categories and maybe I'll scroll down to write this so y equals k over x where k is a constant so we have, it's you could think of it as uh, curves with this equation they fall into two categories the first one is um, y equals k over x where k the constant k is greater than zero and the second one is y equals k over x where our constant k is less than zero and the difference between the two is that when k is greater than zero we're going to have a graph and I'll just sketch it generally like this something like this and when k is our constant k is less than uh, zero it's just going to be like this so we're just switching quadrants essentially and uh, yeah so in the next video I'll work on a few examples um, where I'll sketch graphs of the form uh, uh, of the reciprocal function uh, y equals k over x.